Hi, everybody. My name is Dave Harmy, Chief Operating Officer and Associate Vice President of EPDA Test Assembly Packaging and Process Development here at Infotronics. And today I'm going to be talking about the PIC prototype development using our AIM Photonics multi-project wafer uh, methodology and also our test assembly and uh, packaging capabilities. So first, let's just uh, uh, review what AIM Photonics is. It's one of uh, uh, the uh, Defense Department Manufacturing Innovation Institutes. And as such, all the institutes basically have three things, which is to advance the subject area, make it accessible, uh, to the ecosystem and create an adaptive uh, photonic circuit workforce. So what we uh, create a workforce. So what we have here for AIM is we're advancing integrated photonic circuit manufacturing technology development, and that also includes packaging the photonics. And then we're also meeting commercial defense and civilian agency needs, and and uh, I think we have one of the most uh, accessible operators out there. Uh, we do a lot of bite-sized custom, in other words, ability to come in and modify the process, which is unique amongst uh, foundries. And uh, we have a lot of uh, education workforce development activities. Now, we use a best-in-class 300 millimeter photonic integrated circuit uh, uh, fabrication uh, method in the Albany Nanotech facility uh, to make our picks. And the Albany Nanotech facility has 130,000 square feet of class one clean room operating uh, basically 24 seven uh, throughout the week. And uh, it's really the same uh, facility that other tenants on the, on the site like IBM are using to make two nanometer transistors. So it has a very uniform processes across the 300 millimeter wafer. And uh, this leads to very tight control and uh, as a result, a very, uh, uh, very high performance uh, photonic technology. Now we have uh, several thrusts. Our major thrusts are to make photonic integrated circuits and I'll show you some of the technologies today that's in manufacturing in our MPW process. And we, uh, and we do heterogeneous integration and make uh, interposers. We make silicon interposers, for instance, and that's not widely accessible from a US trusted source. And uh, we have a uh, test assembly and packaging uh, capability as well. Now, all of these are united by having uh, electronic photonic design automation. So any user can come in and get access and actually design and uh, leverage these offerings. Uh, we have over eight years of experience. We've been working with universities, small medium enterprises, industry, US government, defense industrial based providers. And uh, as a result, we have a, uh, a pretty mature ecosystem that uh, enables us to engage uh, with users uh, from contracting and uh, making the PDK available so they can see what the offerings are and how to design. And, uh, and one of the fastest uh, turnaround time uh, for MPWs. Now here's the uh, MPW offerings and you can see here we have four offerings. So the first one is our base, uh, active uh, photonic integrated circuit technology. It's a full suite of, of, of photonic, uh, silicon photonic structures with silicon nitride waveguides shown here in yellow. In blue, we have the silicon waveguide. And, uh, you know, we have dope it so we can create high-speed modulators. And we also have a germanium epitaxial process to have photodiodes, several layers of metal. Now, when we remove uh, the implants, the epi, the metals, you get sort of a cut down version, which is the passive. And if we, if we do a real custom development, just doing nothing but silicon nitride platform, we could reduce the losses even further from what's in the passive. So we call this our low loss silicon nitride platform. Uh, in addition, we make interposers, and one of our offerings that's mature in the MPW is our electronic interposer. What's shown here is one level of, of RDL, uh, the back side of the wafer, 100 micron thick substrate. Here's a signal bearing through silicon vias and three levels of metal on the top. So you can see we release these MPWs every three months. It's a very regular uh, release schedule, so anyone can come in and uh, I depend on that and uh, uh, get access to the PDK design in it and then uh, release the GDS. And for the full pick, we basically have 150 days turnaround. So it's, it's quite fast. Now, this is our development roadmap. So the way our algorithm works is we're constantly doing continuous improvement 
and we're developing new platforms based on uh, user demand. And uh, so the, this just summarizes some of those development platforms. And, and as we're developing this, we first have a, a, a period of time when just the internal team is doing development. Then we have a target offering where AIM users are allowed, AIM members are allowed to come in and uh, ride. Uh, you know, we give some space for these runs so, so AIM members can ride on them. And that way we get feedback about the, the technology and uh, what needs to be improved or what really works well, what kind of things they like. And then we release it uh, with a final PDK uh, to a, a, a full MPW. So one of the things we do is continuous improvement. And you can see here in 2023, we had kind of a final PDK here uh, for our, our, what we call pick two or act two. It's basically a low loss version uh, of what we have in the base. Uh, we, we have a quantum technology base. Now this is a fundamentally a silicon photonics offering that has all of the implants, EPI processes, everything optimized for more quantum applications, a lot more kind of cavities and ability to link up to different waveguides. And uh, in addition, we're adding uh, features. Uh, now, these features are later on in the release, but uh, not just the new implants and the new process, but uh, the new features are going to involve aluminum nitride, alumina, and, and very thick nitride. So you can see our target MPW is in 2025. Today we're actually running our beta MPW. Uh, so we have writers uh, that are using this and uh, getting a uh, learning. We also developed this using government develop uh, uh, government uh, development uh, programs or projects. They call them GDPs. And these uh, so this also helps us do more leading edge development out from the immediate development to make it accessible. Uh, for the user base and the MPWs. Now, here's our silicon plat uh, silicon nitride platform. So we have a, a near uh, IR and a uh, and a visible platform. And the, at the current, we're in the process of developing a visible platform. You can come in, get access uh, to a PDK for that. We're actually releasing a new PDK, particularly for the visible, and you know, release uh, a uh, your, your GDS and uh, we'll run that and uh, so you can get MPW support for that even while it's kind of in development now. The active interposer is a combination of our uh, full photonic integrated circuit technology and an electronic interposer. We we really uh, kind of combine those two and that's become very popular, particularly since people are trying to get very efficient platforms for photonically moving wafers around a very large system uh, using data uh, around very large systems with multi chips. And uh, so this is uh, this is a operate. You can see we've released the PDK already and uh, we're in the process of doing a beta for that right now. And uh, that's getting released. And uh, so we're uh, uh, this this is. Uh, this platform is also being developed. And then we have our 3.5 heterogeneous platform. So in this case, we're doing heteroepitaxial growth in pockets. And uh, John Bowers at UCSB is going to be uh, discussing this as part of our OFC uh, panel. So let's just look at a couple of things. The first is uh, we'll take a look at our low loss uh, silicon uh, photonics platform. So again, this is this ACT2 or PIC2, it's a continuous improvement. We're going to be releasing this and we're kind of looking for riders that have been riding our base uh, MPW technology that are interested in, in taking advantage of lower losses. You can see here's, for instance, a standard silicon nitride and the low loss platform. So it's a really significant reduction, particularly around 1550. So uh, we have a paper for that. It was actually given at uh, OFC by Lewis Carpenter. It describes the performance of this. And uh, over time, we'll probably be migrating users from the base over to this platform because it is have, does have improved uh, performance. Now, we're also developing quantum. We call this thing uh, uh, quantum ultra broadband flex platform. So we're really trying to uh, uh, reduce the losses, just like in that continuous improvement for our Act 2. But we're also uh, bringing in these other materials. Uh, you can see some test sites uh, that have been developed here. We're developing this platform by working very closely with AFRL, RIT, Columbia, and uh, you know by 
are doing that development. A lot of these uh, reticles are coming in. They're sort of multi-project. And uh, we're getting a lot of different uh, devices and demonstrations uh, of, of, uh, of devices uh, by these users. Here we have, for example, an efficient entangled photon source. There's lots of other photonic devices. And uh, Mike Fanto uh, at AFRL, uh, Stefan Preble, uh, Karen Bergman, these are all people that have been publishing on this, uh, on this platform. So, as we showed you early on, you'll see this being rolled out in 2025 and the features uh, shortly thereafter. Now, let's talk about the silicon nitride platform. And like we said, we've been having this thing out for near IR. Now we're in the process of uh, doing more visible uh, bands, so moving uh, to uh, shorter wavelengths. Uh, in the base one, you can see we have over 40 components. This has been uh, developed in combination with the Naval Research Laboratory, particularly Todd Stavader. And we've also gotten a, a lot of uh, help with the component library from Spark uh, Electronics. So, uh, again, sensors, a lot of uh, sensing trenches, full uh, DRC support for all the basic kits, cadence, synopsis, K layout. And again, we release in Cadence, Synopsis, and Luceta for this platform. Now, there's a lot of emphasis on packaging photonics. And towards that end, we've been having what we call electronic photonic packaging PDK based on our active interposer. So as I mentioned previously, this is a cross section through the active interposer. And you can see we have the silicon photonic elements have been flipped on top of uh, an electronic interposer. You can see the dotted line here is this oxide. So this is 3D oxide, full wafer oxide bond. And then you can see here's the, uh, here's for example, a cavity that has been etched, a two and a half D laser put in the bottom of the cavity. The advantage of this approach is that it immediately makes contact with the metals, which are now underneath the waveguides and still syncs up to the waveguides. So this, uh, we think this is a really interesting technology. And we have uh, more packaging oriented PDKs being developed for this offering. And here's our quantum dot laser project. Now, people have been working on quantum dot lasers for quite a while because they have a lot of advantages, particularly for uh, being very uh, insensitive to uh, high defect densities. Uh, essentially, a defect has to go through the quantum dot by having it distributed in quantum dots, then it doesn't have the same stringent requirements that uh, a quantum well say devices have. Uh, you can see all the different layers that have to be uh, involved in this. And here in the quantum dot laser, and in the center are these multiple layers. They they uh, have these indium gallium arsenide quantum well devices. These quantum dots. So if we get about five layers of those, there's enough uh, signal power for that. On blackout wafers, people have been making devices to demonstrate this. You can see they do a ridge etch, contact the end layer, or the diode, and the P layer on top. And uh, when we integrate it with silicon photonics, we have to dig a pocket. We've been doing this uh, in conjunction, and, I, and uh, so I referenced the work of John Bauer to show you uh, the results on this. You can see here's one uh, with a uh, output power of about 80 milliwatts. I think we have a high a high uh, power of about 120 milliwatts. So we've demonstrated functional lasers on, on wafer on chip. Now, <clears throat> we have our Albany Nanotech facility, and that has the Center for Semiconductor Research, which is a where we make our wafers, but we also have a heterogeneous integration uh, part of that fab. And there you can do a lot of uh, dense bumping and uh, packaging. Here we show two aspects of that work that we're doing. One is uh, essentially wafer to wafer uh, bond to bond using, uh, uh, we're bonding that and doing hybrid bonds. So you can see here's a picture of copper to copper or we're hybrid bonding. We also have uh, done flip chip. We have an Amicra Dano and here, for example, we're looking at a DFB laser that has been flip chip into a cavity. We also, on this particular wafer, we're also putting picks so this particular wafer has what we call passive interposer, essentially optical waveguides. And then we have dense bumping, copper pillars, uh, C4, et cetera, uh, that's being done in the Albany facility. Now, TAP is our test assembly and packaging facility. This is an accessible, more assembly-oriented uh, uh, facility. 
a full flow packaging facility. It's in uh, Rochester, uh, New York. It's a combination of 300 millimeter sort of wafer level and chip level. And we're migrating the 300 millimeter towards being able to support 200 and 300. So you can see here some of our systems. This is a look at one of our plating systems. We have uh, NIG uh, nickel and gold uh, processes for electrolytes. We also have electrolytic uh, platers. And uh, all of the tools required to debump in, we have PVD uh, for the seed layer, photolithography, metal plating uh, for these two processes, chemical strip, uh, removing the seed layer and dicing uh, to chip level. So uh, uh, we're uh, quite interested in working with you in this facility. Uh, it has a lot of capability. This is just a real quick look at that capability. Here, for instance, a wafer level tools, you can see we have dicing and we have plasma, we have uh, laser, and we also have mechanical. We have lithography. Here we have an eye line uh, stepper, one micron, and this also has back backside alignment, metallization for the seed layers and other metals, uh, bumping. And like we just described, the wafer probing all at wafer level, chip level. We do a lot of fiber attach, do a lot of flip chip, die attach, a wire bonding, and then a full uh, metrology and test facility. Now, we are in the process of upgrading some of the tools, getting new tools, and some of the areas where have maskless aligners for real fast turnaround. We are putting in uh, bead groove, more bond to bond, uh, sort of temporary bond options. So, you know, we can uh, do RDL and put devices on both sides of uh, substrates, micro transfer printing, and photonic wire bonds. And uh, that's basically uh, the uh, the activities uh, that we have that are available today. Uh, just uh, contact us at uh, A Photonics. Go on the website. It, we'll be very uh, interested in working with you.